Good morning, everybody. It is 6.48 here in Florida. And peace and love and blessings to everybody. Okay, you guys, this morning I would just like to uh, bring you a small teaching. And this will be on uh, the so-called Jezebel spirit. Now, uh, the reason why I'm doing this particular video is because I have seen it in so many different circles where people are using that very derogatory term uh, against people, brothers and sisters that are in Christ Jesus. And should this be done? No. No. Uh, if we are in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is in us, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And um, we should be looking towards the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, instead of a uh, demonic spirit that should in somehow infiltrate the body of Christ. Um, well, anyways, so let's go on here. In order to be justified and or exonerated from wrongdoing, sometimes people will use the word of God to accuse and abuse others. I feel that the accusation of the so-called Jezebel spirit is one of such abuses. Especially since there are so many references to so many kinds of spirits in the word of God but nowhere in God's word is there a spirit that is known as the spirit of Jezebel or the Jezebel spirit. This term an accusatory reference came from man's judgment primarily against women and some men. This is a derogatory term and it should never be used towards brothers and sisters that are in Christ Jesus or a situation that is Christ centered meaning the body of Christ there is a variety of opinions about what constitutes a Jezebel spirit everything from sexual looseness in a woman to the teaching of false doctrine by a woman or a man the Bible does not mention a Jezebel spirit, although it has plenty to say about Jezebel herself. So I am going to first give you a backdrop of Jezebel's type of behavior and characteristics. Jezebel's story is found in First and Second Kings. She was the daughter of Ethbel, king of Tyre, Sidon, and priest of the cult of Bel. A cruel, sensuous, and revolting false god whose worship involved sexual degradation and lewdness. Ahab, king of Israel, married Jezebel and led the nation into Baal worship. 1 Kings 16.31 Ahab and Jezebel's reign over Israel is one of the saddest chapters in the history of God's people. There are two incidents in the life of Jezebel and char that characterize her and may define what is meant by the Jezebel spirit. One trait is her obsessive passion for domineering and controlling others, especially in the spiritual realm. When she became queen, she began a relentless campaign to rid Israel of all evidences of Yahweh worship. She ordered the extermination of all the prophets of the Lord. 1 Kings 8.14 and 13 and replaced their altars with those of Baal. Her strongest enemy was Elijah the prophet who demanded a contest on Mount Carmel between the powers of Israel's God and the powers of Jezebel and the priests of Baal. 1st Kings 18 Of course God won but despite hearing of the miraculous powers of the Lord Jezebel refused to repent and swore on her gods that she would pursue Elijah relentlessly and take his life. 
Her stubborn refusal to see and submit to the power of the living God would lead her to a hideous end. 2 Kings 9.29-37 The second incident involves a righteous man named Naboth, who refused to sell to Ahab the land adjoining to the palace, rightly declaring that to sell his inheritance would be against the Lord's command. 1 Kings 21.3, Leviticus 25.23 While Ahab salt and fumed on his bed, Jezebel taunted and ridiculed him for his weakness, then proceeded to have the innocent Naboth framed and stoned to death. Naboth's sons were also stoned to death, so there would be no heirs, and the land would revert to the possession of the king. Such a single-minded determination to have one's way, no matter who is destroyed in the process, is a characteristic of the Jezebel spirit. So this last sentence says volumes. Again, it says such a single-minded determination to have one's way, no matter who it destroys in the process, is a characteristic of the Jezebel spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, in fact, having the characteristic of having one's way could be known as having the Jezebel spirit, or, of course, that the Jezebel spirit, according to that characteristic, could be at work in any situation. So, that in itself is very broad. So, if there was a spirit that was named a Jezebel spirit in the Bible, I would say it would be wise to include all all the characteristics of her likeness. So to be safe in accusing someone or, be, or a behind-the-scenes situation, this person would have to be against our God. This person would not be preaching and teaching that we are saved by grace through faith. This person would be out to destroy the prophets of God. This person would be a murderer a sexual perverted fornicator. This person would belong to a cult. This person would be dominating and trying to control others. This person would be manipulative. And again, this person would have the characteristic of wanting to have their way no matter who it destroys in the process. So, with all this being said in close, I would say this type of accusatory language within the body of Christ is of Satan wanting to cause division in God's children. There is no God of YouTube. There is only one God. He should be the one who judges us. But because he is love, he sent a part of himself to take his own wrath and judgment instead in our stead. What a wonderful, loving, gracious, forgiving, and merciful God we have. Before Jesus left to go to heaven, he told his disciples to love one another as he had loved them. Why? Why did he do that? Because after he would have left, we were to be representatives of his type of love to one another, which was selfless. He said, by their fruits you will know them. So in conclusion, we should, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. We should be loving one another. We should be giving each other grace. You know, if a perfect, holy, and righteous God can give us filthy, dirty, rotten sinners grace, then we should be able to give it to one another. That is my message. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.